Hello, I'm Jack. Welcome to my YouTube channel, Practical Programming with Doc Sue. In this video series, you will learn everything you need to get started with Web GPU graphics programming. So far, in last few videos, we discussed 3D surfaces with color maps and textures. Today, I'm going to discuss the 3D surface chart or 3D surface plots. A real-world 3D surface chart should include a surface with a color map, like here. In most cases, it should also include a wireframe or mesh line on the surface. So a combination of the color mapped surface and a wireframe gives our 3D surface plots. As seen here, this 3D surface plot is including color mapped surface. On top, there is a wireframe on the surface. In order to create this surface chart, we have two options to do this. The first one is to build the surface chart directly, that is, using the triangle list primitive to create a surface with a color map, as we did before. And then use the line list primitive to create a surface wireframe. And finally, combine them together to form our 3D surface plots here. Uh, this approach should work. However, the process will be complicated because it requires two separate render pipelines. One is for the triangle list and the other one for the line list primitives. We will discuss this approach in a later video. In this video, we will use another method that is we first create a 3D surface as we did before, and then add the wireframe as a texture that is mapped on the surface. Here so those are the 10 squares with the five colors, you can see black, white, red, green, and blue. For each color, we have two squares with different line thickness. This line thickness is one pixel. This one is two pixels. The size for each square is 32 by 32 pixels. And all square here are filled with a transparent color. So the, the square is transparent. I already put this square image into my GitHub repository. So you can download this square from this link. Previously, we create 3D surfaces use core uh, mesh. This unit grid, you can see, this including four uh, points and they also including two triangles, P0, P1, P2, P2, P3, and P0. These two triangles. Here, we want to use one of these transparent square as an image texture and map it onto this unit cell. So each square uh, image will map on a unit cell like this. A 3D surface is built with many core uh, unit cells. Eventually, all of this square texture will form wireframe for our surface. Here shows the texture coordinates 0, 0, 1, 0, this is 1, 1, this is 0, 1. So the UV data for this uh, unit cell will be 0, 0, 1, 0, 1, 1, 0, 1 for this point. So this text coordinates will be the same for different unit cells. Starting from this video, I'm going to update our code by following the new update as described in my recent YouTube video. Here is the YouTube video link. The first change is the cedar file. The cedar file now, instead of the TS file, here we use WG. SL extension. Another change is before we define light model parameters directly in the cedar file. Now we move all these parameters to the TypeScript code and then pass them use the uniform buffer. In addition, we will use a new WGSL syntax. That is, we replace double square 
break it by this eight uh, symbol. For example, before we use stitch double bracket here, here we also have a double bracket. We use this eight symbols, then we replace it here like this, eight stitch. And the location zero, we use eight location zero. So the code will become more readable. Similarly, here we have a binding and a group is uniform. So we make this change at binding zero and also at group zero. So this code will become like this. Here we will use the Git tool to clone the source code used in the last video. Here is the download link at GitHub repository. Now open a command prompt window and copy and paste this command here, clone WebGPU 41. This will generate the WebGPU 41 folder on your local machine. This folder contains all the source code used in the last video. Now we want to change the name of WebGPU 41, rename WebGPU 41 to GPU. 42 and CD into it. At this point, we are going to start Visual Studio Code with the command code period. This is the Visual Studio Code interface. Okay, we can close this getting starting page. Now, here contains the source code used in the last video. Now, open a new terminal here and run npm install to install all the packages used in this example. Okay, finished. All the installed packages are stored in the node modules folder. And here I have added a 10 transparent square image to the DIST and SS folder, you can see black square, black square two, blue square, and so on. So these 10 square images already in this folder. As I said, you can download this image from my GitHub repository. Uh, in addition, we will make some changes to our code according to my updated YouTube video. First, we need to install the TSC loader here, npm install. Okay, next, uh, we need to make some changes to the webpack config JS file. So we need to add some code here. Here we test uh, the extension file as wgsl, glsl, vs, and fs define as a uh, module. So save this file. Next, we also need to add a new folder called the tabs to the SRC folder. Add a new folder called tabs. Then we create a new type of file, add a new file to this new folder, cedar d.ts file. This type definition declare this here. So we declare the file with WGSL, GLSL, VS, and uh, FS, the file as a module. So save this file. So you can uh, watch my code update video to understand why we make these changes. Next, the Cedar file used in this example will be similar to that used in the last uh, video. But now our Cedar should include color map and also texture map. So it will become a little bit more complicated. In the SRC folder, we add a new Cedar file, Cedar file called Cedar.wgsl. Then add some code. This is our new code. You can see here, we use the new WGSL syntax add, you can see, to replace the double square brackets. Or you can see all here, no bracket anymore, so the code becomes more readable.
In addition, here the input not only have the UV coordinates, but also has color data. The color uh, represents the color maps. Here in the fragment seeder, we replace the light parameter with the light uniform the buffer to represent this parameter for our light model. Now we can save this file and close it. Next, in the SRC folder, we rename this texture.ts file. Rename as a chart.ts file. Then we need to replace the code for this file. You can see here we have a create a chart with a texture function. This function contains the input arguments is a vertex data, normal data, UV data, and uh, color data. Also, we have a texture file. You can specify different color square image by changing this file. Uh, here, the buffer definition are the same as uh, those in the last uh, example, but we add a new color buffer here to represent the color maps. The new code added to this file is a light uniform buffer. You can see we define light parameter using the TypeScript code and define light uniform buffer using this light parameter. This light uniform buffer will pass this uh, parameter to the seeder. The rest of the code is the same as I used in the last video. So we don't need to discuss it anymore, so we can see this file. Next, open the surface data.ts file. First, we need to make some changes to the simple surface data because we need to add our new texture coordinates for our square to these methods. You can see originally we have UV. This UV is for one image to cover the whole surface. Right now, we use our square to cover a unit cell, so different. So we need to define another UV data, we call the UV1. Here is UV, then we need to add the UV1 data because this UV1, the data, is the same for all the unit cell. So we just add the number here for these two triangles. It's the same for all the unit cell. Then we need to return this new defined texture coordinates. So UV, UV1 data and UV1 here. Similarly, we can make some changes to the parametric surface data. The same thing here, we define original UV data. Right now, we need to define UV1. And here, we need to add UV1 data. This is UV data, here is UV1 data. Next, we need to return this UV1 data in order to use this data. So UV1 and UV1. Now, we have finished the modification to this file. We can now save this file. I will stop here for today, so you can have time to digest the code. In the next few videos, I will use this framework to create a different 3D surface chart with both color maps and a wireframe. Now, we have complicated this example. Most examples presented in this video series are based on my recently published book, Practical Web GPU Graphics. From this link, drsu.net.com, you can see the details about this book. I have created a GitHub repository to host the source code used in this video series. From this link, you can download the source code used in this video series. I also create a live demo at this link. This demo shows the live results by running the example projects presented in this video series. I will end this video here. See you next time. Bye.